Hi everyone, my name is Jorge Ayala. I am an entrepreneur, a designer, Mexico City born, and we are in my studio in Saint Germain de Pré in Paris. Jorge Ayala Paris is a lifestyle brand that actually goes from clothing design to lifestyle items like skateboards and also um, pieces of, uh, of art in a way. Um, the brand operates really as, as this uh, experimentation and techniques that I, ha that I inherit from architecture that I'm trying to put forward within the, the fashion world. To that extent, we have started experimenting with shoe design as well and accessory design. Mainly, I have a ready-to-wear line and we do have also some high fashion pieces. There's a lot of uh, tactics of developing my work. Uh, somehow, I started like this contemporary architect defining form with compu computers, with softwares that in general are used by the cinema industry and that I have brought to the terrain, to the landscape of fashion. But obviously the, all of this is virtual, this is not material, and my aim was to really bring all these approaches and sensibilities to the real world. So that's where I actually start experimenting with different approaches, which are from textile to 3D printing, from a form to actually the, um, the overall silhouette itself. When I finished school, I was very frustrated that 3D printing techniques and technologies were so expensive and still they are today. So that's what actually took me to a different level of experimentation when it comes to 3D. That was to actually start testing my own ways of developing 3D by using other, other um, ways of, of creating form, which is laser cutting, which is vacuum techniques, which is embroidery, and which is having actual three-dimensional textile. Computers, to that extent, have allowed, I think, all, all the industries today to develop any sort of, uh, of form that remains virtual. Uh, what I love about working in my computer, you know, is that I can go infinite, you know, there's no limit, as a matter of fact. The, the, the axis X, Y, Z really allow you to just go as far as you can, but then it's a matter of reality and it's a matter of being real in an industry that is clothing, in a way, fashion. So that's where actually, I went, once I define a form, once I define a shape, then I seek to take it to the next uh, stage, which is form, which is materiality. And that's where actually, the, eventually, the computers are a bit limited to that extent because you can't just pull them out from your computer. And that's eventually where I start sorting out, you know, ways to develop it. Simply also because, you know, I don't have um, any engagement whatsoever to do just 3D printing techniques. I think it's a great, great technology and I think one should support that, but I also think there's other ways and techniques in order to get computational and what one calls advanced design to the terrain of fashion. You know, in my work I have always had this degree of reality, which is, you know, to have wearable pieces. I am not approaching my fashion architecture as pieces for a museum. I would like people to really wear it, so to that extent these pieces are, you know, just proofs of having this wearable approach on my ornaments, you know, this is a pleated by hand organza, you know, that I found here in Paris, and then it's all, all been implemented to create this kind of three-dimensionality. Then we have these pieces, for instance, you know, that are my print, and then they acquire this kind of alienated approach, which is an hybrid between an architectural model and a garment, in a way. You know, then we have this other one too, you know, which is all three-dimensionality, but it's all soft, you know, so you can actually really wear this piece, you know. And on the other hand, we have these scarves, which are actually this in-depth graphic approach with different, you know, layers of intelligence. You have computer-based, you know, like this all animated kind of video game flair, and then you have more painted by hand, you know, which is this kind of approach that obviously comes initially from, again, more computational stuff. So it's about mixing techniques and mixing um, elements that give, get you to a, to a different level, you know, of understanding fashion. I think somehow the fashion world has become 
global and all this fast approach to design has eventually kept the excitement aside. I also think uh, it's important for clients to feel unique with their pieces and eventually yes, within the brand we are doing very small series of production and to a certain point there are some pieces that are quite unique. So I can, I can have clients that buy, you know, a, a tunic that is entirely embroidered, you know, with corals that I purchased in a trip to Thailand. And I can also have a client that also wants to buy a necklace, for instance, for their art, contemporary art collection. So again, it's about breaking boundaries, it's, about, it's about breaking paradigms with it, within what we understand today, what is fashion. I think the ingredients to have a successful brand is, uh, are several. I think it's a bit of a mix of definitely having a radical position, uh, what one calls the DNA of a brand. And I think uh, it's important to have it defined from collection one. And on the other hand, I think there's a bit of, you know, social media that is always helpful. I think a business like mine, for instance, would have never been successful 10 years ago. I think using all the social media, using internet, you know, allow, has allowed me to exist. So 2015, 2016, you know, it's all these kind of ways, media of communication, but also mediums of communication, which goes from, you know, red carpets, which go from events, which go from social events and going further, you know, which goes on to building up a discourse to a brand.